Guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Bird Brain Podcast, where the goal is to rise above it all, stay elevated, create that infinity, and up your you. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today we are going to be talking about a concept of emotional permanence. What that means, what it looks like, what it feels like. Uh, If you have, first of all, if you know anything about attachment theory and you have an anxious attachment style, this might be something interesting for you to to think about and process. And hopefully it helps by the end of it, because that's the goal, right? Um, if you've been through a lot of a lot of scenarios in life where, you know, there was a lot of inconsistencies in, in your relationships, emotional permanence may be uh, very familiar to you. All right. So we're going to talk about it. And we are going to do our best to unpack and navigate and come out on the other side. All right. So if you're driving, put on your seatbelt. If you're at home, put on your (laughs) seatbelt. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into this. All right. Stay tuned. Guys, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. First off, I want to start by welcoming our new patron, Ms. Sasha Fountain. Thank you for your patronage. And welcome to the nest. <laughs> if you guys want to become a patron supporter or Apple Podcast subscriber, the links are in the bio. You get early access to episodes, ad free episodes, bonus content. And you just get to hear more of me. (laughs) So, yes, go about it. But, Sasha, thank you for becoming a patron. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are y'all doing out there? How has January been so far? This is, I'll I'll be real with you. This is probably, like, the fastest January I've experienced in quite some time. Usually January is very melancholy and depressing and slow. And it's just full of chaos in my book oh. <laughs> but this january seems to be very productive and moving along fast although you know it's been raining a lot it's still been pretty solid if i if i say so myself and i what i like is that there are more conversations being had around emotional intelligence you know relationship dynamics friendship dynamics right um and you know there's 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 discourse around it all And the goal is to not see everything as law, but there is more conversations around mental and emotional health and how how fragile and delicate we actually are as people. I think for so long there was like this uh, ability to bypass how we treated other people just because it was you didn't really have to deal with it. Right. You didn't have to deal with it and or society allowed you to kind of navigate in such a way where you could just bypass what you were doing to others without there being a conversational piece around it. And it was it was appropriated even up until recently. It was appropriated like ghosting, for example, like that was a thing that was like it was very okay to do. It was just a social norm. You did what you did. Now there's conversation around that because depending on who you ghost and how you ghost someone that's going to leave a very heavy impact depending on who the person is right and depending on who you are as a person how um fixated you are in your relationships how that impacts other people etc you know there's 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 uh there's reverberation, if you will. Uh, there's an echo for responsibility and behavior in the ethers now. I feel, and I like that people are people are uh, having more of a representative for how they feel, 
right, for what they think. And they have, you know, these tools, if they choose to use them, to work through it. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today was uh, emotional permanence, right? Uh, if if you don't know what emotional permanence is, this is a concept I just recently learned about. But, you know, studying psychology, you learn about object permanence, right? Um, and one one thing I can think about in particular was... You know, uh, there was this one video in school, they show a baby, right? A baby, someone has a toy in their hand and they're showing it to the baby. The, they put the toy behind their back. The baby's still looking, but the toy isn't there. So it's out of sight, out of mind, right? Object permanence. The, if the toy isn't there, I don't remember it ever existing kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? And if you have been in experiences where love, right, or affection or care was inconsistent, more often than not, emotional permanence is a thing that's difficult for you. There's a a constant need for reassurance, and when it's not there, if you're an anxious attachment, specifically, um, you're kind of triggered, right? It's like, oh, this person doesn't care about me anymore, right? We're only we're only good as long as you're in my face. <laughs> um, and beyond that, I can't hold on to the object, aka the idea that I still matter to you. Unless you're telling me in this moment, as soon as you leave or as soon as we get off this call, as soon as the text messages stop, uh, the idea that I matter to you, the idea that I'm valued by you is 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 not there. Right. Then I'm nervous. Then there the fear of abandonment creeps in. And then, uh, you know, I spiral a little bit and then that sends me into like this depression or this angst. Right. Where I'm like. I want to connect or I want this. And again, this just does not apply to romantic partnerships. The The unfortunate thing about abandonment of any kind is that it, it shows up in all aspects of your life, right? It just shows up and... It's unfortunate because it's painful, right? It's it's a painful process to to work around and it I don't know if you ever really heal from it. You you heal parts of yourself for sure and it will require you and this is why I think, you know, the the healing work, the shadow work and all that that we talk about is so raw. It's so uh what's the word I'm looking for? Visceral, (laughs) uncomfortable, but necessary. And I will say this, a a temporary discomfort is better than a life of it, right? So going through those moments and checking yourself and like forcing yourself to stand still sometimes is so important, right? Those moments you need... Um, you know, going back to anxious attachment, those moments you need reaffirmation from another person, ask yourself, how can I give it to myself instead? Because if I'm consistent on my end, right, whether somebody comes or goes won't be as, um, painful and detrimental to me because I'm doing it. And it's hard, right? Because we, again, we don't experience ourselves like other people do, or we don't experience ourselves like we get to experience other people. So, it's important that we just, it's hard, y'all. <laughs> it's its just important to do little things to take care of yourself. Like, um, you know, when those feelings creep up, you know, pause and be like, you know, is there truth to this? What's the truth to this? Right? Where's the information? Oh, this person is not making plans or, you know, communication is only a certain way at a certain time and now it's not happening so therefore the whole routine is 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 thrown off so basically what you're looking for is consistency in your relationships right so when we are seeking consistency in our relationships not necessarily frequency but just consistency 
seek the latter um, because frequency is not always an indication of somebody's um, loyalty, intention, right? I've said this before, consistency versus frequency. It's the difference between somebody who's always hitting you up when they need you, right? And then they disappear until they need you again. And then there's a frequency to their behavior. And then somebody who's consistent, it's like, regardless of whether things are good, bad, or indifferent, I'm still going to reach out. Like, I don't only seek you out when I'm in need or no one else is around or, you know, I don't have better things to do, right? I'm confined to a, a situation. And now I'll reach out to you, right? Because that sucks and that hurts. <laughs> and that's where, you know, emotional permanence can be exacerbated because you have a person that's, you know, hitting you up in one spot, hitting you up in, in one span of time. And then as soon as there's a change in their schedule or their priorities um, or their interests, you kind of take a back seat and that stings, right? It hurts. And it's like, well, what do you, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? The best thing that you can do is to not reach for that person. Instead, hold yourself a little bit tighter. And what I mean by that is when you are starting to have those moments, pay attention to how your body feels. Like what's going on with me right now? Is it in my stomach? You know, is it in my head? Do I feel it in my chest? Is it is it heavy on my chest right now? Right? Is my face getting hot? Right? Um, am I sad? Am I scared? You could be all of those things. Am I angry? Am I hurt? Right? A lot of times when we're angry, that's just hurt. Right? That's that's hurt. So first, you start there. You say, all right, cool. What am I feeling? What's going on? All right? Where am I feeling in my body? And then you do your best to recognize that this is almost like a simulation because it's not real, right? A lot of times we are, <laughs> we're at work, we're, we're in a line somewhere, we're driving and we're feeling all these feelings, right? But we're not having the experience that we think we're having. All of that that's causing that pain, the pain body, none of it's happening in that moment. We're in our car, Right. We're driving. We're listening to music. Right. We drive. We driving. We jamming. We chilling. Right. Or we're at work or we're at, you know, we're out with somebody and that that moment comes up and it's like, shit, this sucks. <laughs> but you have to bring it back to yourself and say, wait. What's real and what's not. What's real and what's not. Right. Because truth be told, whatever you have in your head is not currently happening, literally is not happening. So we, we get more realistic. Right. Let's let's, you know, do the factual thing. You know, what's really happening in this moment? And then you make it a point to separate your facts from your feelings. Right. I'm feeling A, B and C. OK, while my feelings are valid is the experience that I'm having now. Is that congruent to what I'm feeling? Yes or no? Right? Yes or no? And then you go from there. And then you ask yourself, well, what is it that I'm actually worried about? Is it rejection? Abandonment? You know, feeling less worthy? What, what is it? And to go even further, just ask yourself, well, if this person doesn't care about me, now what? Let's say this person really doesn't care about me the way they say they do. Now what? What happens after that moment, right? What happens next? Because we, we stay sometimes in the thick of those feelings and it's like uh, catastrophizing, right? It's like, oh man, my world's going to end, whatever the case may be. No, <laughs> nine times out of 10, it's not. It's not going to end that way, right? It's not going to happen that way. If, if somebody doesn't value you, somebody doesn't prioritize you, awesome. All right, cool. Yeah, it stings. You know what? But now I have the information that I need to make better decisions moving forward. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to prioritize me. I can prioritize myself. <laughs> and I can be in the company of people who, who prioritize me. And if I don't have that right now, I can I can take time for myself, right? And and I could do what's necessary for me. 
right? Emotional permanence is a tricky, tricky thing, especially again, if you didn't have people who were consistent with their love, their affection, or it was always something, uh, there was a contingency to when you got some affection or approval or validation. Uh, it was transactional, right? It was very transactional and very much, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very much inconsistent, right? So the emotional permanence uh, creeps up. If somebody's not talking to me in this moment, like I only feel loved and like I matter when we're in this moment of, of exchange. Beyond that, I can't really trust how I feel and also I can't trust how you feel about me. And on to that, if you are in that space, I want you to take a look at the person you feel this way about. Have they given you a reason to think that about them, right? Because sometimes in our head, we have a very distorted perception of how other people see us. We reject ourselves for other people. It's like if you have this idea that, oh, every time I text this person, you know, in your mind's eye is like they see your name on the phone and they sigh or they roll their eyes and they're like, fuck, dude, I got to I got to respond back to this person. Um, I got to take this text because is this person texting me? Hold on. I'm going to get rid of them. Right. Or, you know, I'm not going to respond. I don't feel like talking to them. So I'm just not going to respond. You have that modality in your head that that's what someone thinks about you. And usually it's the people that you, you love the most, right? People that you adore and cherish and you, you truly care about them. And yet it's still on the opposite end of your head. You think that they consider you like the dirt on the bottom of their shoe. And I want you to ask yourself how you see that person is very um, painful, right? And it, 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 it's as good as you think that person is in your life. You don't have a good perception of them. Ask yourself, do they deserve to be thought of that way? Does this person deserve to be thought of? in such a way that makes them seem like a very um, brash, bitter, uh, vindictive person when it comes to you and what they think of you. Do they deserve to be thought of that way? And also think about it. If you were to tell a person that you think that's how they think of you, how do you think it would feel for that person to hear that? It would probably hurt them, right? Because they'd probably think immediately, oh, shit, I'm probably doing something wrong. <laughs> I'm not treating this person right. You know, I'm not I'm not being present in my relationships. I'm not, you know, being cause and for, you know, to some degree, some people very much don't care. <laughs> but a lot of times there are people who do truly care, right? And they have no idea that this is what you're feeling. This is what you're thinking. This is what you think they think about you, right? Because your emotional permanence isn't there. And that's a good thing to think about sometimes too. Like, are you, are you the kind of person to be thought of in such a way with such disdain and, 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 annoyance and aggravation and obligation is that really who you think you are as a person that people only um can continue relationships with you out of obligation because they feel like they have to versus you being that person that people just love and adore and want to take care of and value do you truly think that you deserve to have that perception of yourself and that other people have that perception of you. And in turn, you have this perception of other people. Is that deserving? Does anybody within the relationship deserve to be thought of in that way? Yes or no? And if your answer is no, we fix that. We say, look, I know I'm scared right now. I know I may feel like I don't matter. But it's not true. And I could prove it. And then you say that. I could prove it. Even if you don't know how just yet, it's, it gives your mind something else. I can prove it. Right? And don't go proving it by like blowing up their phone or like, 
you know, protest behavior, you know, you want to get an answer from someone. Prove it by taking a step back or taking a standstill and just breathing. Go do something for yourself. Go journal, right? Go listen to some music. Go clean the house. Go exercise. Go eat, right? Drink water. Do something in the moment that brings you to the moment that's happening versus what you were fixated on that hasn't happened and probably won't happen ever. That's the goal with emotional permanence. It's it's creating some level of permanency in yourself and in your head and in your body that you can actually be sure of, right? Because I'll tell you, we cannot make people care about us, okay? We cannot make people care about us, right? That's why when people say love is a choice, it's like, look, if love was a choice, we'd be so much healthier in terms of how we treat ourselves. But self-love is hard, right? It's something that you have to work at. And oddly enough, we could love other people easily. But when it comes to loving ourselves, again, because we don't experience ourselves there's this disconnect of where we think that we don't deserve as much grace. We don't deserve that word grace. We don't deserve as much appreciation as we're willing to give others. Think about people who've hurt you. Think about how much you love them and they continuously hurt you and you still love them with ease so much so that you probably look for ways to rationalize their behavior. So with that in mind, Do you honestly think somebody forgets you that easily or that you are so easy to dispose of? If you have been able to love people who have been so hurtful to you and like genuinely love them and care about them, your ability to love those people, even though they didn't love you properly back through time, I'm talking about years, You honestly think it's that easy for somebody to just dispose of you or get tired of you or like just no longer want to be in your life or have you in theirs. Do you think it's that easy? Like, let's be honest. It's not. If somebody really cares about you, they really care about you. Right? Sometimes it's us meeting them there in the sense of we have to care about ourselves too. And the way we do that is by creating some truth right? Creating more truth than negatives, than falsehood, right? We do that by building a little bit more confidence within ourselves. Take a look at who you are, not just what you do, but who you are as a person. Write it down on a piece of paper. Like I am this. It's not a one fix. It's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. It's challenging, but you are worth the challenge. And what it requires is you being mindful of those moments when you're triggered, right? Being mindful of those moments when, when things come up and creep up like those, those negative feelings, right? Where can I turn that feels consistent and safe, right? Have a hobby, manage your time, right? I want you to write out what, what your day looks like on a day-to-day basis. You have 24 hours, just like everybody else. What are you prioritizing within those 24 hours? Okay. What does that look like, right? Is it productive, right? Where can you reprioritize? If you recognize that relationships may seem a little bit one-sided, Where can you prioritize instead? Where are your boundaries in terms of that? Have you communicated, right? And I'm going to be the first one to say it. Not every relationship that's one-sided deserves communication. Sometimes people know, okay? But it requires discernment. I'm not saying that every situation you have to just walk away from is stonewall. And I'm also not saying that every relationship you have to communicate and offer your communication because communication is not comprehension and communication does not always encourage change. Character, it doesn't change with a a conversation. Okay. But recognize what are the patterns or themes within the relationships that I keep cultivating? Do these people feel consistent or am I trying to force consistency within this relationship? Okay. Think about that. Right. Because we have choice in the relationships that we have, okay? And emotional permanence is relying on you to make better choices about who you're engaging with, right? How safe they feel versus how comfortable they feel. Um, How much they love you and care about you instead of just how much you're willing to care about somebody else, right? All of this matters. It truly does matter. And you have to take your time with it. 
Okay, especially look up attachment theory, look up attachment styles, because that'll help you a little bit, too, in terms of like how you navigate relationships. But if it always feels like a person only loves you as long as you're talking to them and then when it's out of sight, out of mind, you feel like they don't care about you at all. That's something to think about. Right. And if you can seek out a therapist, right, talk about these things. Right. Work with them. Um, I'll work with you. <laughs> you know, I, I coach within these realms because it is a very um, scary place to be in. And I think no matter how old we get, we always want to feel like we matter. And we belong. We always want that. We're always seeking it. So how do we create that? Right. How do we find it? OK. So there's just things to think about in terms of emotional permanence. And now that you have the word, look it up. Right. And also pay attention to it. Pay attention to how you feel with other people, because sometimes your emotional permanence is existing because somebody is not being truthful with you or sincere. Right. Where it, it, their love is conditional and they are not being genuine and authentic. But then there are other people who very much are. And that's when it becomes our work to love them properly and trust them the way that they deserve to be trusted instead of throwing aside their affection and their love. Okay. So that's all I got for you guys. All right. Uh, I hope you have a good week and I hope this is something that you think on journal about it. Do what you got to do. Okay. But yeah, work through this because it is a real thing. And especially if you have some abandonment wounds, emotional permanence is very challenging and I get it. Right. But trust and who you are as a person and how you take care of other people because that is a barometer for what you deserve in the world and a lot of times how other people see and perceive you okay coaching is in the bio as well if you want to sign up for coaching i have slots open for new clients and i would love to work with you and uh yeah the link is in the bio leave a rating or review for the podcast tell the people what you like it helps the podcast grow in the algorithm and it just reaches a broader audience, which is the goal. OK, and yeah, I think that's it. I think I did all the homework. So with that, take care of yourselves. OK, take care of your heart. Take care of your peace. Take care of each other and take flight.